my wife, Zosha, and I, we would like to thank everyone for coming and to share our happiness. I know sometimes when you go fishing and you catch like a really good one and nobody sees it, it's just not as good. So I think I caught a really good one and I'm glad everybody sees that. Uh, this is our small get together because when you take uh, Zosha's family, a couple of close friends and uh, you know a few nieces, cousins, and stuff like that, this is what you get. Uh, and I'm glad to be a part of it. Thank you. Uh, if I was to thank everybody who did something, we would not get to eat, so I'm going to uh, try to keep it short, but I have a few things I need to say. Uh, first off, I would like to thank Raphael and Michael, Ralph and Mike, as I call them. Uh, it's, a, uh, it's a big deal to me what you did today that uh, you handed your mother to me. And I would like to say that uh, two things uh, changed for you today. One is that I have this responsibility now. You guys have been shouldering this for 23 years of being the closest one to your mom, the one that uh, she had to call on. And I really appreciate what you've done for all those years. And uh, you've been relieved of duty. You don't, you don't have to do that anymore. <laughs> You still have to love her, though. And the, and the second thing is that uh, for what it's worth and what you're ready for and whatever, uh, for 23 years you've not had a, a father in your life, and I'm just so proud of what you have accomplished in your lives uh, as uh, this far. And for whatever capacity I can... Uh, serve as a father to you. I know it's kind of late to the to the scene, but uh, whatever that is that you're ready for, I'm here for you, and uh, I'll uh, I'll look for your cue. Uh, likewise, Zosha is glad to welcome my son and daughter uh, Bert and Sarah. And uh, welcome them, in, them into her life, and they've been gracious and warm to her. And Sarah and Bert, thank you for coming and sharing our joy. And Sarah, thank you for all the hard work you did, making everybody's hair look pretty. <laughs> uh, even Ralph looks pretty today too. Sarah, Sarah did that one too. So, good job. Uh, I would like to say hello to my eight new sister-in-laws, some of them are not here, eight new brother-in-laws, 13 new nieces and 15 new nephews, and their families. Thanks for accepting me in. I haven't quite mastered the family tree yet, but I'm working on it. I want to thank my family for the love and support that they've always shown. My mom, my dad, my sister Diane, my brother, my best man, my musician, Ed. Uh, we lived in a small house and we could never hide from each other. And we never knew our house was small, it was just home. And uh, I wanna, it's, it's where I learned what love should be. And to my mom, especially, I want to say something. Uh, she was always, that, that song, you don't know how important that is. When I was a little kid, sitting around listening to the A-track tape in the back of the Volkswagen van <laughs> uh, of Paul Simon. But, uh, first, let me, let me thank my dad, because he, um, he's the one that taught me about 
getting your butt out of bed and going to work and taking care of business. And uh, thanks to that. And I do want to thank my mom especially because that that love uh, from my mom when I was when I was a little boy and I would hear her call me. I don't care where I was, if I could just barely hear it, I had to come running home. And my friends would say, she doesn't know you hear her. I said, I know I hear her. I gotta go. <laughs> and even when I had grown and gone from home and I was uh, doing things young men do, and I would often be challenged with, what's mom gonna think if she ever finds out about this? So when the devil called my name, Mama still love me. Pusha and I would like to thank, who Zosha calls, my lovely girls, oh, my beautiful girls, Krisha, Carolina, and Anya. Thank you for taking time from your busy family, your busy life, and all your family things you have to do. And um, being with Zosha and helping her to just hit a home run today. <laughs> and I want to thank my guys, Everett and Dave. Everett, I've known since seven or since seven years old, since we were in second grade. Dave, when I first moved in the neighborhood, I saw a motorcycle in the garage next door, and I said, "Is that for real?" And I'm like, "Yeah, that's me." That's All right, and we hit it off right. Uh, right from the bat. If anybody wants to guess how many motorcycles Dave and I have worked on, you'd probably do better than we would because we don't even know. <laughs> We've been through a few. Um, I really have some special thanks to Ed, who rarely gets to travel without his guitar. <laughs> when I first asked him to be my best man, I said, look, I know you never get to travel without your guitar. I got an easy one. I don't need a stag party. All I need for you to do is stand with me and uh, do the best man speech. He said, no problem. Then I called up and I said, hey, can you do one song? And, and he said, yeah, sure. So he worked on it. He, he figured out that first one. And then I said, uh, we were meeting with a DJ. And they said, that would be really great if your brother would do that other song. So I called him again and I said, Ed, can you do another song? He said, oh yeah, yeah, I'd love to. And then a little, a little while later I said, can we change all the words to that song? And he, he rolled with it and he got the job done. I think he did great. Thank you, Ed. And, and just so you know, what he did today, that's not what he normally does. He's usually like breaking strings on an electric guitar and playing on ZZ Top and uh, Leonard Skinner and things like that. He can really kill one. Uh, we want to thank Gib for tailoring Zosha's wedding dress. Thank you to the DJ Jans. Thank you to Hefner Photo. Uh, no relation to Hugh Hefner, right? So. We thank uh, Colleen and staff at the Grand for the food and the venue. And I want to thank my, my friend, my brother, Reverend Dr. Ronnie Elred and his wife Pat for coming. And uh, Ronnie Riddick I've known for over 20 years. We were thinking my hair was dark and his was had some. <laughs> He's, he's the, the greatest brother, uh, an absolute fantastic Bible teacher, and uh, he, he loves God and he loves people. And so does his wife, Pat. And his sister, and her, so, um. Okay, so now there's one more person I need to talk about. <laughs> Let's see. Zosha. Now, Let's all practice saying Zo Sha. Zo Sha. Not Zasha, Zisha, Zoshi, Sophie. I've got it like so many. Zo Sha. Okay. All right. When I first met her, we were both a little battle scarred from life. 
And we were kind of like two porcupines that just don't get too close to each other. <laughs> we just kind of walked around and talked a little. And as time went on, I, um, I found myself wondering, what an incredibly kind-hearted woman. How can this be with all that, that she's been through? How can she uh, have such a life of struggle and, and, uh, and heartbreak? And even the years she has spent being beside people as they step into eternity. Um, she has just loved people very, very powerfully. And I saw her strong faith in God and her ability to see past and through uh, just trying to make an outward religious sign. And she had become a woman who knew God by an actual faith in Him. She counts on no religious credit for doing religious things or even for attending to the, the dying that she has done. She just did what she felt God wanted her to do. And her hope for eternity rested in the person of Jesus, his payment for our sins, and his victory over death. I noticed some other things about her. She's kind to animals. That's important. Uh, she actually loves them. We used to go on the motorcycle and go down and feed the goats and the donkey and, and so she would be concerned that they couldn't reach that green clover that was just outside the, uh, the fence and she would go pick some and make, make sure they got some. The donkey actually knew the name, right? That little donkey loves her. Um, so as time went on, I, I watched other things. I, a little thing like you're in the grocery store and she actually cares if she's in somebody's way. Like, a lot of people don't. She just really is concerned with other people. And those kind of observations you can make instead of asking someone, do you care about other people? Of course they say yes. But when you see it, uh, unprompted, unscripted, it's just straight from her heart. Uh, you understand what kind of person she is. And so here's a, a, a thing that happened. As I started knowing her, like I said, we're friends, and I've, I'm, I'm seeing somebody needs to give this woman some happiness in her life. And... So I, I helped her out and I wrote a profile for her on the dating site and said, uh, well, here, here you go. This should get you a, a good guy somewhere. And, but by the time I got to writing it, I said, what? I, I, two things happened. One, I realized she was the woman of my dreams. And two, I could not trust anybody else to treat her the way she should be treated. And she would go on a date, and she would come back, and eh, she would tell me some things, and not really be impressed with this guy or that guy. And that's made me realize I had to just take care of this. I had to all this date searching thing. So, uh, As, that, as time went on, her and I have become very close friends, and we have shared very, a lot of our hurts, a lot of our healings, a lot of our faith in God, and I had only one hesitation in asking her to marry me. It's going to hurt so much when one of us leaves first. And at our age, that's not something you think of when you're 22, but at our age, that's something real. And I'm willing to risk that kind of hurt if I can get this kind of love. I will love her like she deserves. Thank you, Zosha, for loving me the way you do. Thank you for letting me walk down, letting me in. 
And I want to close this with some of my, my Polish words. I learned these from the Psalms, so I can't make this up myself. Żona moja, sister moja, nie ma taki, jak mi moja. My English speaking friends, that means my wife, my heart, something like us is impossible to find. Ladies and gentlemen, one more time, please put your hands together for our girl for a great speech. Now it's time to invite to our head table our best man and maid of honor, Christina and Edvard. And then, ladies and gentlemen, before I pass the microphone, Ed is the brother of the groom, the best man and the musician, who will sang two songs at last and hallelujah, as our groom mentioned. So please give it one more time, Ed. Chava Bestman, he was great. You agree with me. Great talent. Now I can pass the mic. Oh, there's something I'm used to, being passed the mic. <laughs> you know, my brother said a lot of things here, which is good because that doesn't mean that I have to say that much, really. Because he already thanked everybody. What am I going to say? <laughs> Other than that, when he told me he was getting married, and I knew the struggles he'd had in his life, and he told me that he found somebody that he felt as strongly about as he does, and she feels the same way about him, I felt nothing but joy in my heart. And when he said, oh, I asked you, you know, would you like to be the best man? Could you play a song? Could you play another song? And I'm gonna change it and all that. And of course I said yes, because what was I going to say? No. <laughs> I would do anything that my brother asked of me, you know, within reason. And this was quite well within reason, I think. So, I would like everyone to raise their glass. A toast to Burton Zosha. And they both have a wonderful, long life together with much happiness, surrounded by all their family and friends, all of us, and we, may we all be there to witness it. And I wish you two the very best, as I'm sure everyone in this room does. We love you. Here, here. So, hello everybody. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, uh, my name is Christina, and I'm one of the nieces that Bert was talking about. So, first I want to say to my aunt, Churchu, you, you've never looked more beautiful. You can see the joy written on your face. And, and I'm so happy for you today. It's Bert's fault. <laughs> so as um, we don't often say to each other the things that are really in our hearts. But this is a good chance to do that. And I want to tell you how much I admire you for your resiliency and your strength of character and your courage. And I think it's really a good thing for us nieces to see a good example and a good role model. And I also love the importance, the great importance you place on family. That's also a wonderful lesson that you've taught us. Thank you. Bert, after my parents first met you, uh, my, my dad came to me and he said, Kish, this guy Bert, he's, he's a great guy, he's a Marine, uh, and he's got the most amazing head of hair. <laughs> and, and so, when I first met you, I was prepared for your beautiful hair, <laughs> but I was more impressed by the person that you are. Um, you're a very loving, considerate, kind, warm person, and you've extended your heart, not only to Zosha, but to all of us. And so I think I speak for everyone in the family when I say we're thrilled that not only are you two joining your hearts together today, but you're also joining 
our wider extended family. Welcome. Speaking of family, you did take note that you're marrying into a rather large family, a rather ethnic Polish family, and since you're going into some uncharted waters, I thought perhaps I could give you a couple phrases in Polish that would help you out along the way. And, and since you already know Polish, apparently, maybe you know some of these phrases. Okay, ready? Okay, first one. Dzień dobry. Dzień dobry. Do you know what that means? Good day. Yes, good morning. That's, it's a good conversation start. Close, too close. 50%. I'll give you half, half more. Time. So that's a good one to know. Another one. You may have heard this one. Na zdrowie. Yes, exactly right. To your health. So when you're clinking glasses, you your new wife, na zdrowie. Right? This one is a very important one. Masz rację, kochana. You know that one? No. No. Chocha, do you want to tell me? Right. You're right, dear. Lock that one away. All right, and the last one, and the most important one, Kohamcha. You know that one? I know it, too. I love you. Yes, I love you. You're good. All right. So in closing, I have a thought to share with everyone. Where your heart lies, there your treasure is. And I think you two have found in each other a jackpot. So here's to you. For our Polish-speaking guests, I have a few words prepared in Polish, which I shall have to translate for you. Jest przepiękna staropolska tradycja, w której rodzice prawie młody witają ich z chlebem i solą i winem. To jest wszystko bardzo symboliczne. Chleb, żeby nigdy niczego nie brakowało. Sól, żeby życie miało smak. A wino, żeby było słodko. Co ciocia i Bert? Życzę wam, żeby nigdy wam nic nie brakowało. Okay. Żeby zawsze wasze nowe życie razem było zawsze słodkie, smaczne i pełne miłości. Sto lat. Now we can sing. Are you ready? We can please stand. We're going to sing.
going down to one. And you please help me out, all right? Ready? 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 4, 3, 1. Yes! Please raise your glass for our bride and groom, Zosia and Burton. Good luck, best wishes. Gratulacje, pijemy do dna. Brawo!